In this first model, we will see why we are usually wrong about innovation. What we used to think about innovation and the connection between re research and innovation are not perfectly right or even totally wrong. What we used to think is that we have a logical path and the logical path will begin with the research, so we do research. And this research will lead us to some discovery, to some invention, to find some method, some product, some compound. And this achievement of research is what we call innovation. And this innovation, the next step will be actually to bring this innovation to the market. In other words, to proceed to commercialization. I took an example of academic research leading to new type of materials, beautiful materials. They are mesoprosilica or obtained with soft matter, the uh, surfactant, the liquid crystals, or the soaps. And these elements of soft matters are used as template to shape the prosity of silica. On the left, you see a macrograph of porous silica where this uh, line, these stripes you see are actually the picture of a very well aligned uh, pores and these pores are assembled in an hexagonal honeycomb geometry. Mesoporous silica I'm, I'm using as an example here, I, I do it because I've been working a lot on it, so I know uh, very well this domain, but of course I could have picked up some other example from the material science like uh, pilot clays, metal organic frameworks, carbon nanotubes, nanocrystalline cellulose or the graphene, all being uh, absolutely beautiful materials, high quality research and very nice chemistry. Let's go back to the mesoprosilica and the mesoprosilica, this type of uh, well-ordered porosilica was actually discovered or rediscovered in the 1990s, especially with a famous paper published journal Nature in 1992. And that was a real, real revolution about the way to make porous materials. And since 1990s, I would say that probably there have been around 20,000 publications being published on this domain or relevant area. For myself, I've been working for many, many years in this domain and overall we have published like 25 papers, we had uh, five patents and the, these papers, this publication have been cited more than 2,500 times. For this is domain that I've been working in for many, many years, which I, I know quite well. And when you look at all this academic work that has been done and, as I said, excellent research, millions of dollars being invested, hundreds of faculty professors or professional researchers been working in, thousands of students working. And after all these years, when you look at and try to identify the actual application, you find none, zero, nothing. Of course, I don't say that there are not companies who are synthesizing this type of silica and sell them, but if you try to identify a large scale or even medium scale application for this type of porous material, you will find nothing. As we have been working on it for so many years, we used to claim that this material would be so useful in so many domains like in catalysis, in energy, name it, any domain. So apparently, starting with academic research, whatever the level of our expectation didn't lead us to achievement in the market. Let's take the opposite. Let's take the opposite side, which is starting from the business point of view. And this photo is a photo of the team for my first startup company working on biotechnology. And we had a highly committed team. We had enough money to do it. We were successful to demonstrate that our system, the proof of concept was working well. And what we decided was to follow the logical path, what I call the eight logical steps. The first step is of course to begin with some research. And in step two, you hopefully you will discover something. 
And what you do next will be to protect this. Because of course you don't want anybody to steal your invention, your discovery, your process. So you go and you file a patent to protect it. When you have your discovery, you have protected it now, you must write a business plan. And a business plan is something, some document that will explain what you will do within six months, one year, two years, what will be your development, what will be your cost, your revenue, how many people you will hire, what will be the market, how much of the market you will manage to reach in percentage, etc., etc. As a matter of fact, as academic researchers, usually we have no idea about what is a business plan. But we will talk to people who will ask us, okay, uh, do you have a business plan? Can you show me your business plan? Give me your business plan. What is your business plan? So what we do usually is to try to find on the internet some template and try to fill this template. But it happens that most of the topic, most of the questions that are in this template, we don't even understand the question. So it's very difficult for us to create this business plan because we have no idea about what is going on. We don't have any idea about the numbers, about how much of revenue we will make uh, within three years, five years, ten years. So let's say that you write something, you have the discovery, you have the protection, you have everything. So now you will take this and you, you will go and try to explain to funding agencies, investors, some other companies, try to explain what you have achieved, your discovery and how you will develop. And because you have this beautiful business plan, that show actually totally the path that your project, your company will follow over the next three to five years. And once you have explained, maybe you have been lucky, so you get some money from a funding agency or you get some money from a company or from some investors. I would not recommend to ask for money from family and friends if you want to keep them close, but this is your problem. And then step seven, we are almost there. It's simple. We just execute the business plan. And we follow the steps that we have put in the business plan, what we'll do within the first three months, six months, etc., etc. And when we have everything perfectly executed, then we can commercialize our product, our system, our invention, our discovery. When you follow these eight logical steps and you see that all these steps make perfect sense, this is what should be the most probable end for your project. At least it was for our project, our first startup, startup that was just a big failure. So based on this uh, negative experience, I started to think about, okay, so we we believe that everything we were doing was so smart and logical and makes sense and that was almost what everybody was telling us. So maybe what we believed was smart enough in what we were doing, maybe there was something that was silly and something silly we had noticed. To try to understand this, I had to move back and try to understand what we define as innovation. This picture is from the Office of Research and Commercialization at Texas Tech University, but I could take the same picture, similar picture from probably most of the institution as academic researcher we used to work with. This is what they call the innovation cycle. And you see that is this innovation cycle begins with the research, and you invent something, so you disclose the invention, you assess this invention, you protect it with intellectual property, and then you will do some marketing to try to find people and companies interested. You license it, you do the commercialization, and then that will generate revenue that you can invest back into your research. And in this innovation cycle, we find the eight logical steps I, I was talking about research, invention, protection, commercialization, and finally success. Only the difference was that I told you that usually at the end you don't meet success, you mostly meet failure. 
So the problem is that when we look at what is our actual mental scheme, we see here that at the center of our ecosystem of research, or maybe I should say our ego system, we place the researcher, the researcher doing research and discovering something. Then what we do, it's usually to go to our institution and ask our institution to help us to protect it. The institution, the research institute, the university will pay for filing a patent. And then when we have it, we get in touch with industry to ask the industry first to give money and secondly to commercialize our patent. And at the end of the food chain, at the bottom of the food chain, actually, we find the user. This can make sense, but maybe the problem, the, the silly thing that we didn't notice is that it goes from the researcher down to the user. Why we should maybe take the opposite and start from the user and go up to the researcher. And if we try to figure out what is the right direction, we can look at some numbers. And these numbers illustrate the, f the fact that usually we fail because we forgot an important factor. And these numbers are from a survey that the magazine Fortune did in 2014, where they contacted founders of startup companies who failed, and they asked them what was the main reason why their startup company failed. And there were different reasons. They ignore customers, the marketing was poor, they didn't have a good business model. It's not a business plan here, you see it's a business model. Their product didn't deliver the uh, properties, the quality they were expecting. They had a serious issue with the pricing over cost ratio, or maybe the competition developed uh, a new solution that outbeated them. The team was not the right team for the project and they ran out of cash before being able to do whatever. But actually, surprisingly, the main reason why this startup failed, 42% of the failure for these startup companies was that once they had developed the system, the product, they went through all the eight logical steps and started to commercialize their solution, it happened that there were no market need. That means they went down the chain from the researcher, from the institution, from the uh, industry partners, investors, etc., etc., down to the user. And when they reached the user, there were no users. People were not willing to use their product. They were not interested. They didn't see the reason why they should pay for that product because they didn't need it. We can say that this is quite a negative description of uh, what we try to achieve when we try to do some innovation, but we can look at the positive side and uh, use the quote by Henry Ford, who said that failure is simply an opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Don't forget that at the opposite, we used to define stupidity as doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. So we will see in the next model that before try to define a strategy for innovation, maybe we must define what is what we call research, what is the outcome of research, and also what is innovation. How, that, how can we define innovation and how research and innovation being related.